Hi, my name is Diane Benson, and I am here with LLK12, Learning with the Library, Kindergarten through 12th grade. This month's focus is going to be more on the older students. So if you have students or are a student and pomp and circumstances in your near future, college may be just around the corner. Join us today while we talk about how to best use library resources to prepare for college. All right, let's go ahead and get started in some of the um, some of the details that students can take when they're preparing for their next educational step, which for many students will be college. So in today's episode, we are talking about different ways that students can uh, prepare for college and resources that are here at the library that they can help them as they make that transition. Um, the first thing I want to say is just kind of give a, uh, I guess, a little disclaimer. Over the years, I've seen so many students experience so much angst over this, like, I have to go to the perfect college, or I have to have the perfect uh, test scores and GPAs, etc. And students can put a lot of pressure on themselves in those in those areas. And the thing I like to always remind students is that every college choice has pros and cons and you just find the one that kind of fits with you. And then of course, if things don't work out, there is always the opportunity to transfer. So it's not like really your whole life is hanging in the balance with this one decision. Just like you'll find out through the rest of your life, it's all about flexibility, finding a way to work in the system that you find yourself in. So the first thing I want to do is share some information um, from local college professors from uh, University of Tennessee see in Knoxville from Maryville College and from Pellissippi State Community College. A couple weeks ago, we had a panel of those professors come in and talk about what freshmen should know to be successful in their transition to college. So the first thing I want to do is just share a couple of highlights from um, that program that we had the other night. The first thing I do want to mention is syllabus. Okay, the syllabus is your contract in a way. It is going to lay out for the student once they get into a college class, everything they need to know to be successful in that course. It will give them their professor's contact information. It will tell them when things are due, how many points projects and papers are worth, what's being covered in class that day, and also what the professor's policies are relative to turning in things late or coming late to class or attendance, etc. So I always wanted to, when I taught, have a t-shirt that just said, read the syllabus, <laughs> because that was the answer to so many questions that students have. Um, and sometimes they just get that syllabus at the beginning and don't really refer to it. It should be a reference tool that you use for the entire semester. The second biggest thing really that leads to success in college is time management. For many students, college is their first time kind of out there completely managing their own schedule, completely managing their own time. And um, as most of us learn or, or know, time management is not always that easy. Seems like it is a process that for many of us, we're constantly tweaking. What time of day is my brain most alert? Maybe that's the best time to study my hard subjects. You want to make sure that you're scheduling time to study. High school and college are kind of different in that in high school, you spend the majority of your time in class. And then it's almost like a triangle. It's the, the tippy top is like the homework and things you do at home. But in high school, the majority of the time is the bottom of this triangle. And that is time that you spend in class. When you get to college, it's actually the opposite. You spend less time in class, so the point of the triangle is there at the bottom, less time in class, and you're expected to do a lot more work independently on your own time and your own schedule. Some courses may not have a lot of assignments. They may have a couple of papers um, and a few tests, but that doesn't mean that you don't study until the night before the test. You need to make a plan, figure out what's good for you relative to time management. And then also don't forget to plan some time in your day for also fun and getting to know other students. So if you feel like this is a weak area for you, you may want to come to the library, get some books, look at some um, online materials that we have that'll give you some tips on uh, how to best manage your time when you're in college. For a lot of students, really that's it. 
for success in college is can they manage their time? It's not how smart they are. It is can you and are you disciplined enough to manage your own time? Um, the next thing I want to mention relative to college that came up when we were talking with these professors is understanding how to study. So many times in college we get students who will say, I never had to study in high school. Okay, it, you know those kids, it just all comes easy and it's an A and they, they've never had to study. What we find with some of those students is when they hit that mark where they really do need to study, they don't know how because they don't have that practice of what type of study techniques work best for me. Am I a visual learner? Am I an auditory learner? Do I need a study group? Do I need to go to the library and study alone? But how to study is uh, an important thing. And even while you're in high school, maybe if you are one of those students who doesn't necessarily need to study, maybe you can start experimenting with that. It's kind of like having tools in a tool belt so that you have things that are there that you're kind of familiar with how to study to get the best um, uh, information. This is going to include how to read a textbook because reading, you know, you read for pleasure, that's one thing. You read a textbook and it's a little bit different, right? I don't know, have you ever like, oh, I can't wait to get to the end of chapter two in my textbook and see what happens. I can't even go to sleep. You know, we're not typically having that same reaction to our textbooks. So many times we have to read them differently than we do that novel that we're reading for pleasure. And there are actually different techniques on how to read uh, for learning. You know, you go slower. Can you summarize it in your own mind after you've finished a section? You know, can you take notes on it and make up some questions and answer those questions? So reading for these classes in college is much more interactive than just reading for pleasure. Um, the other thing, when you're looking at the information that you're learning in college, it is also a level um, different than you may be learning in high school. In the early grades, we do spend a lot of time memorizing. Like, do you know when, you know, when was the War of 1812? You know, when did this happen? Who was the president during this? Um, give me the definition of a, um, uh, a comma splice, or give me, a, you know, tell me about a comma splice. In college, it is much more about at least many of the assessments and the tests that professors give is more about not did you memorize it, but do you really understand the material? Okay, so you may not have test questions that say, for example, you know, give me the definition of um, cognitive dissonance. You may have an example given to you, a situation, and then say, this is an example of which of the following psychological phenomenon. And you would have to learn to recognize the example of cognitive dissonance, not just understand the definition of what that is. So that's a little different for a lot of students. Some of them are really stuck in that, um, you know, but I've got to memorize everything is, it, that is in this chapter for the test. That's always a good first step, you know, no, uh, being able to recall the information. But to get the good grades or the higher grades in college, it's going to be a lot more about can you apply that information then? Can you give examples of it? Can you synthesize it and pull it together with other information to make um, an argument? The other thing that you want to be mindful of in college is your writing skills. Even if you're not an English major, guarantee you're gonna to have to write lab reports for science. You're gonna to have to write um, reports or essays in, in almost every subject that you have. I've always felt that actually writing about a topic is one of the best ways to learn. Because like I mentioned earlier, you pull all the research from different areas, then you have to work it in your brain and synthesize it to get it out on paper. By the time you do that, you usually very much understand whatever topic that you're writing about. But but writing skills. So I taught psychology for many years and while I wouldn't take points off for someone for a comma splice or necessarily bad grammar, it did it did need to be readable and uh, it written in a way that the student really was conveying the information in a manner that was easy for me to see. Yes, they understood it. 
If I can't figure out what you're saying to begin with, to even decide if you're answering the, it right, that's going to probably result in, a, in uh, some points off or a lower grade. Most colleges also have writing centers and tutors that you can get for help, that you can go to for help. And I always say, why would you not do this? It's free. You know how much you have to pay for a tutor if you went out and hired a tutor? So I encourage you to look at those resources there at the college that are available um, uh, to you. Make sure that you know those resources, but also other resources that are available to you as a student when you're at college. Um, even the career center, the different tutors that are available, um, different study groups that might be available, but also different support for like if you're sick, where do you go if you're you know at a college three hours away from home and you're really, really sick? Um, look at the medical um, options there on campus. Or if you're suffering with um, a lot of anxiety or depression, which is very normal for a lot of folks when they're making this transition to college, there are mental health professionals also available on campuses. And I just encourage students to know where those resources are, what they are, and be willing to use them if they need them. As a parent, if I was sending a, call, a student away from home to college, I would have those resources so that if they called and they were having a really, really rough time, I could say, here's who you need to call, here is their number, you know, and make it as easy as you can for your student to reach out and get that help that they need. Um, let's see, interacting with your professors, do it. <laughs> okay, do it in a way that's professional. Um, if you send your professor an email, it's really good if you put in the subject line the course that you're taking. You should sign your email with your first and last name. Some professors have hundreds of students in one semester. And when you say, hey, I have a question about blah, my name is Mary, they may have like a handful of Marys in a bunch of different classes. And usually professors are teaching, you know, more than one level or more than one type of courses. So make sure that you make it easy on your professors. Um, I also recommend that when you email professors, you use your college email. Um, you know, it's always a little uncomfortable when you get an email address from a student and a, the email is his sexy girlfriend dot com, uh, dot gmail or whatever. So make sure that you're, you're being professional professional in those interactions. Address the professor by their title. Don't just say, hey, dude. Um, it would be my first recommendation unless they just explicitly tell you that you can call them, hey, dude. It is good to get to know your professors, visit them during their office hours, because they're also a good resource for you if you need references. They may have they may have suggestions for you in your career. They may have connections for you. Many times when I taught, students would approach me and ask me to write them a recommendation letter. And it was so much easier for me to write a powerful letter if I had actually interacted personally with that student, if they had stopped by my office hours and expanded on something from lecture or uh, asked some more questions. So I just encourage you to do that as well. And then one last thing before we move to some of the other ways to actually get you to college that I just want to mention is um, don't you don't have to be the Lone Ranger when you go to college. Um, it is sometimes it's a little daunting. You may not have your best buds there with you if you're going to college away or um, you, maybe you don't have any of your high school friends in your classes, but be open to other students, be open to reaching out. And I do always encourage students to at least get involved in a couple of campus activities. You can get great leadership skills. You can meet other people who have potentially similar interests of, as you do. And sometimes that's a path to finding your, your tribe of people really as you uh, begin this journey through college. So I hope that kind of gives you an overview of once you get to college, but of course standing between you and college may be the application process, maybe some tests, ACT, SAT that you need to take, and uh, the Blount County Li Public Library also has some great online resources uh, to help you prepare in that way also. So we're going to go ahead after I point out college is a good thing. We're going to go ahead and move over to the computer. All right.
right, let's go ahead and move on over to uh, the Blount County Public Library webpage, and we're going to start here at the main page. And the first place I want to take you is just to the card catalog. And there are a couple of features I just want to mention in here. One, if you come over here to the far left and you click on these three little lines here, and then you go down you can go to where it says lists and you might want to go through there and look um, uh, in the next few weeks there should be a list on here that includes books about college going to college but just lots of times for no matter what the topic is you might find some cool things or cool ideas in some of these lists here um, so just wanted to have you keep that in mind the next thing i just want to mention is just generally searching for books. We have a book display out front this month that has a variety of books about college, going to college, success in college, etc. But you can also just go straight to the card catalog and look up and uh, get some ideas for books that might help you or your student as you're kind of preparing for that next step. Uh, strategies for college success, um, get it together for college, Let's see, how to college, what to know before you go, and then also when you're there, um, all sorts of interesting information that is going to help you in two areas. I mean, and really, you can search this um, uh, in several ways. You can search college. You can search um, paying for college. You could search surviving college. You could search by succeeding in college. So there's a whole lot of different ways you want to parse this out as you're, as you're getting ready for college. One of the best things that you can do is develop good study skills and good basic um, uh, um, academic skills before you go to college. That's always a big help. So if you have some academic areas you need to shore up on, you could even get some books about that. And I am going to come over here and click on Peterson's Test and Career Prep. Okay. Let me go ahead and click on that. And this is what I was referring to earlier when I was saying that there's lots of um, tools available to you help you prepare for the college application process and um, testing, et cetera. So Peterson is part of the Tennessee Electronic Library that is available to folks around the state. And there is a lot of cool preparation prep material for tests that you may be taking as your planning to go for uh, to college. A lot of vocational tests, career tools, uh, resources to help you find a school, find a scholarship. You have access to all of this. Um, and, and I do encourage you to go ahead and, and take advantage of that. The ones that I want to mention here is, let's see, college improve. We're going to click on college prep down here at the very bottom. And then you will notice some of these different tests. The AccuPlacer is uh, given a lot of times at colleges where um, they potentially don't have your ACT score and they want to decide what, what English and math to place you in. We have the ACT, CLEP tests, which sometimes people take for early college credit. DSST can also be used for early college credit. SAT, so a variety of exams here that you can uh, practice and get more information on. So let's go ahead and look here at the ACT, since a lot of people around our area tend to take the ACT. You can see that there is an online course and there are also practice courses. And so if you pull this up, you can go ahead and click on the ACT online course. There's going to be, you can look at also books, articles, how to prep for the ACT. ACT, and then actually taking practice tests. Taking practice tests is one of the best things that you can do to raise your, um, your score on ACT. Usually what I recommend to students is you, first of all, take a whole practice test without the timed portion of it, and then go back, look at the ones that you got wrong, but then study them. Why did you get them wrong? What is the right answer? How can you approach that when you see that type of question in the future? And then move to taking the timed ACTs uh, so that, you, that you're kind of used to that time 
dynamic that comes in those tests. By the time you get to the real test, you should already know all the directions and kind of have a feel for how the test is going to flow. But taking actual practice tests, just like you would in the testing environment, so you don't get up and have a snack in the middle of the test, um, is one of the best things that you can do to kind of help you prepare for that test. So Peterson also has like um, other tests prep for like if you're a high school student and you're um, going to be taking an AP course or AP test, prep for those materials are in here or for those tests are in here as well. So Peterson's test and career prep is going to be a really good place to go to as you're starting to search for colleges, decide where you want to go, what's important to you in a college, um, but then also the actual test taking. And this time we're going to go to the Tennessee Electronic Library, TELL. And the reason I bring this up is um, one of the things that when you get to college, almost everybody's going to have to take a freshman English class. And so you're going to have to do some research. You're going to have to know how to cite your sources and um, to write in an APA or MLA um, format for your papers. So you can get some good information just kind of on how research works, how databases work, um, uh, and be a little ahead of the game when you go there for that. So if I go in here and let's see, I go to students, let me click there, and then I click on college. And then uh, let's see, I think we will go ahead and go to Gale, uh, College Gale in Context. And you can see there's all sorts of um, different resources available. So if you're going into psychology, you'll probably be using a lot of the psychology databases, for example. But so for this one, we clicked the Gale in Context for the college student. And if you come down here at the bottom, we have videos that are available to teach you how to use this tool. OK, how you're going to cite your resources. There's videos on that. There's videos in general about how you use databases uh, such as Gale for research in college. So these are tailored to the college student and it is going to give you just kind of um, a good start with how to begin when you get in those freshman courses and you'll kind of know where to go to get information. So a lot of good information here in uh, the Tennessee Electronic Library available no matter where you are. So you can do that from home. Again, the Peterson Career um, and Test Prep is a great resource for you. And then all the books that you can imagine. But the key thing is, is just to um, don't let, don't get that, what do they call it? Paralysis, analysis, of paralysis of analysis, something like that. Anyway, you know, because it's kind of like this is a unique time in life when it feels like in a way the whole world is open to you. And sometimes it feels like, you know, we have to decide now on the one path we're going to take. But I just encourage you to know that um, for so many of us, we know that it, it doesn't really work that way. Like the path twists and turns and sometimes we veer off and go a different direction and um, uh, high school students student now, 10 years from now, you may be someone and someplace that you never would have expected today. And I just encourage you to embrace that as you go forward. I hope you enjoyed this month's presentation of Learning with the Library K through 12, LLK 12, where we talked about the college journey and how best to prepare for that. The library in so many ways is just an open door to whatever future that you can imagine. So I hope you found some stuff useful in today's presentation and please do join us as we continue this series in January with a program on study skills. Thank you. I got this, which I, I always love to have fun props. This is to point at stuff with. Love it. I'm <laughs> <laughs>